Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariela Lozano and I am currently an upcoming junior at Arizona State University. Today I'm going to be filming the 30 most frequently asked questions that I get from freshmen in my position as a residential engagement leader and mentor. I have two reminders for you guys. Don't forget to check out my podcast. I'll have the link down below. And also, congratulations to our giveaway winner. Here she is. Thank you so much for entering, and don't forget to stay tuned for the next giveaway. Without further ado, let's hop right into this video. I chose ASU because, number one, I found out that the W.P. Carey School of Business was one of the top business schools in the States. The second was because it was closer to home for me. It's around a 40 minute drive just in case I had to commute for any reason throughout my years and I did my freshman year. And the third reason was because I got accepted into Barrett the Honors College. I'd say that it really depends on the person that you're asking. I'd say that ASU is just like any other school and it is what you make of it. So I'd say that it's kind of 50 and 50 if you think if it's a party school or if it's not because it really depends on what you do and what you like doing. If that's not your cup of tea going to parties every day and stuff like that then don't do it. There are plenty of other things that you can do on campus. I personally love going to parties, dancing, hanging out with my friends, but also doing my academic work. So I think that being defined as a party school is not very true, however other people would define it that way. I personally think of it as being just like any other school, it's ordinary and you're just going to have as much parties as any other school does and I mean as long as you're having fun and doing your work then you'll be fine. As for meal plans, you do have many options to choose from. We do have the Unlimited, we have Sparky's Favorite, Gold, Maroon, Almond G. And if you're a Barrett student, you do have to do the Barrett meal plans, so they do have the Barrett meal plan specifics too. Maroon and gold dollars are basically kind of like cash. So if you go into the pod market, you can buy your chips, you can buy food, you can even go to the Memorial Union and buy stuff from Ingrain. Ingrain is my favorite restaurant. I don't think it's really promoted because it's not a part of Aramark, which is like the thing that owns basically the Memorial Union where we eat. But if you guys want to check out Ingrain, I definitely recommend it. They have so much good food there at a really reasonable price and you'll just thank me later when you go. It's on the second floor, it's by the big steps and I just really enjoy Ingrain. But you can use it there and you can also use it at Starbucks, at Chick-fil-A, at all the other places that we have like Udoba, Subway, um, Jamba Juice, all those places you can use your MNG app. But basically a meal swipe will allow you to go into the different dining halls and you use one swipe and you have one hour to eat during that meal period and that's how the meal swipe works. Now one thing that a lot of students don't know is that if you're not able to go to the dining hall, there is an option to do a meal exchange at one of the pods. And pods are basically like mini markets. So you have your food in there, you have school supplies, you have just like those things that you need, those CPGs, they're um, consumer packaged goods. So anything from like toilet paper and napkins, hand sanitizer, all that, that's there. But as I was saying, for meal exchanges, what you can do if you don't have the time to go all the way to the dining hall is you can just go to one of the pods and have a meal exchange and you use that as a swipe. So instead of a swipe, you use your meal exchange and you can get a drink like chips and they have the options of getting either sandwiches, salads, burritos, anything in that realm that they have available there is available to you. And it's something that a lot of students miss out on because it's not really highlighted in the meal plan area. So if you ever need a quick snack, you can do that. As for school spirit, I believe ASU is really fun and friendly, especially on game days. We all get together and if you're like me, I love going out and cheering on our Sun Devils at our games. It's so much fun being in the student section because everyone's super loud, you have fun. We even have like a tradition where we like shake our um, keys, Sparky does some push-ups, we sing our ASU fight song and all that great stuff. It's so much fun and sometimes you even get freebies. 
So I love freebies. I have so many ASU shirts just because they always pass them out on campus. Don't worry, you will get plenty of ASU gear by the time you graduate. We also have Fork and Fridays, which are super fun to just see that they still care about us. And they have like a cool DJ set up in front of the Memorial Union and they do some fun things like give free food, free shirts. Um, sometimes we have the culture fest and stuff out there. So be on the lookout for that whenever you're on campus. Where and when should I get my textbooks? This is a great question. And I'm going to tell you to 100% avoid the bookstore at all costs as much as you can unless you have books that are specifically from ASU like your professor says that they have a book that's a special edition only and it's only accessible through the bookstore and at ASU or if you need a special code for some of your books but other than that I would recommend either going half seas with your friends on books and Splitting it up as much as you can so that you don't have to pay as much for that. I recommend that if you're going to get any other apps like Course Hero or even Chegg to split that up with other students as well because you can do that and save yourself some money. As for textbooks, as I was saying, I would recommend that you go digital and get your books there. Usually it's a lot cheaper, but if you're still into the paperback books and all that stuff, then you can get that too, but rent them from cheaper websites because going to the bookstore is just too overpriced, too expensive, and not really relevant, and it'll save you a lot of money. I made the mistake of buying my laptop there when my best friend got her laptop, the same laptop that I got, same gigabytes and everything, for $800 cheaper than I did at Best Buy, and I was kind of sad because she even got her beats and stuff and so you can just save money by looking around that's what i'm trying to tell you and i'm trying to save your pocket some money as well so try to avoid the bookstore at all costs and when to get your textbooks this is really important wait as long as you can to get your books i would say the most you should wait is probably two weeks because a lot of the classes allow you to have a free trial if you do have the Say you have like a code or whatever that you need for the specific book, then you can use like a two week free trial and then spend the money to get the book so it's not that much and you can save yourself some money. Some of the popular study spots at Arizona State University. Um, I believe Starbucks is really popping all the time. Even if you just want to go grab your drink and then head to one of the libraries, the next spot. For Starbucks though, be aware that it might be a little noisy, but if you're chill with that environment then go there and do your work. I usually just do like my calendar blocking and stuff there. Nothing too crazy like studying just because I personally can't study when there's a lot of noise. So if you're like me then you have another option of going to the libraries. We have Noble Library which is more of the engineering libraries but any of these libraries are open to every student so don't be misguided by the name. They are open to everyone and you can just use them as any other person. So Noble is an option or in front of the MU we have a new library, it's called the Hayden, basically new library and then there's the old Hayden library that's on to the right of it. There's some steps that go down and that's a Hayden library, that's the old Hayden library but I personally like the new Hayden and Noble a lot because Noble has another Starbucks and if you know me I love my chai tea lattes so I'll be there. Uh, if you find me ever, I will be there on like the second floor or third floor because those are the the way that libraries work. I'm sorry, I keep on rambling, but the way that libraries work are that on the first floor it's going to be a lot more noisier or there's more noise and the more up you go, the quieter it gets. So just be aware of that and be cautious because there are going to be people that are going to be studying and you want to be respectful. So if you're going to go up all the way to those top floors, make sure that you are very quiet, quiet as a mouse. There are two other options that a lot of people don't consider, which are the computer commons or even the Armstrong building. Armstrong building is amazing. They have like the Wakanda room, they have the Harry Potter rooms, all those cool rooms and it's super quiet and great to study down there. Again, it's called the Armstrong Building. Another place is the Computer Commons. The way that the Computer Commons works is that they have computers there. 
hence it's called Computer Commons, but they have computers there that are open to most of the ASD students. It's on a first come first serve basis, so if you go then you can just log in and be aware that they do delete the information on there, so if you go back to the same computer and they don't have the information there, it will tell you and warn you that it will delete after, I believe, like 24 minutes of logging out, but that's kind of what the computer commons is like, and the really cool thing about those um, desktops there is that they have the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite for free if you want to learn and practice. That's how I started, and then I paid for it on my own, so now I have it on my own because I do use it for work and other purposes, but if you want to learn how to use Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, then they have those programs on there for free for students at the computer common desktops, and so if you want to see that, then definitely check those. As for living on campus, what to expect, I say that there are fight hours, so keep in mind that you do have to be respectful of other people because on weekdays you have quiet hours, especially on weekends too, but on weekdays it's from, I believe, 9pm till the morning, and then on weekends it is at 11pm, so a little bit later until the morning. And then another thing is to also keep in mind whenever you have your roommates there to create a contract so that you guys aren't fighting all the time and this way you'll know what you can do, what you can't do, and what everyone has to do. It'll just keep everything in line and help you just feel a lot better about having those roommate rules set up at the beginning so that you don't have to yell at each other and step over each other when the school year starts and everything is kind of getting a little bit harder. You don't want that all to happen at once, so make sure you take care of that at the beginning. Another thing to expect is that you do have CAs that enforce the rules, so if you're doing anything disruptive, they will go knock on your door. If you're doing anything inappropriate, they will go and knock on your doors. If they hear that you have any drugs or alcohol because ASU is a dry campus, they will go in there, confiscate your stuff, and also call the police, so just be aware of that and be cautious of that, that you're not doing anything too crazy because they have crashed parties in dorms, people with like weed and drugs that shouldn't be there, and they do get arrested and get kicked out of housing for good, so just be careful if you're going on campus, please do not do that stuff there do it somewhere else and just I encourage you not to do any of that or participate in any of that behavior inside of your dorm rooms, it's just not very appropriate. Say that the first place to stop by if you need help with anything is to go to your professor's office hours. Not only will they help you there just clearing the air with any questions that you might have, they just allow you to clarify and learn the material a lot better. The second option is to go to the free tutoring centers that we have on campus. Do not shy away from these, they are amazing and there might be a small stigma behind it that you probably heard like in high school only dumb students go to like tutoring but that is not true. A lot of students use the tutoring centers at ASU and they are completely free. So I recommend that you go. I used to do my homework there and just ask them to review it and then submit my questions because some of the math courses that you take only allow you to do like three attempts per question and so I wanted to make sure that I was on the right track and not going to lose any points. And that's what I did, finished my homework quickly, went home, and went on with my life. So definitely check out the tutoring center because it is free, and also talk to your professors. That is really important. It is not mandatory to live on campus. I actually was able to exempt my offer of living on campus because I had financial shortage issues my freshman year, and so I couldn't live on campus and I was a commuting student. So if you're also on that same boat, please make sure that you talk to either the financial aid office or housing to see if there are any other options for you to be able to exempt your offer for housing. You can go to a lot of places, however, be prepared to walk. Sometimes it is more of a far walk for other things, like the engineering building is completely on the other side of where business is and Barrett the Honors College is. So make sure that you do check out the map and are aware of how far everything is. I believe from going from Adelphi to let me see, Mill, it was probably like a 30 minute walk, but if you're from Diapy Carry to Mill, then that's probably like a 15 minute walk, and from Tucker to Mill, that's probably like a 10 minute walk. So it just really depends on where you're at, and so everything's 
pretty close. Um, a lot of people like to take their bikes and their skateboards just because it might be a lot. I'd say it's not hard to navigate campus, but it's a lot more walking. So do bring plenty of water. And if you're going to use those, be aware that we do have walk only zones on Palm Walk and other areas. So just be aware of that because you don't want to get a warning whenever you're on your board or on your bike. So make sure you are aware of those things. I believe it's enforced from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then after that you're free to use your bike and skateboard. Another really cool thing that we have available is the safety escort. These are available for the nighttime so I believe it starts at 7 p.m. If you feel like you need someone to take you to your car, you don't feel safe, don't worry the safety escort is there. Be aware that you do have to call in like 30 minutes prior because sometimes they do take a little bit longer to get there but I really liked using this because I would go to the P. Carey School business and have to go all the way behind Tucker which was like my parking structure for the fr for my freshman year and so that was pretty far and I would just call safety escort and they would take me directly to my parking area my parking garage that I didn't have to worry about getting like stolen or just like having to walk a long distance and so I like using the safety escort to get around to places. Another thing is we have the flash forward and flash backward buses. I'm not too sure how those work but I will definitely leave a link for you guys so you can check those out. Those are completely free for ASU students and we also have the Tempe Town shuttles that also are free and they take you to different like places around so if you want to go I believe they also take you to like Tempe Marketplace and all that. So, be aware of those resources that are also available. Another thing that is available to you as a student would be we have an ASU shuttle. Basically, you get on that shuttle and you can go to downtown campus like Havasu campus and even like back to Tempe and all the other ASU campuses if I missed any. My favorite spot on campus would probably be the McCord Hall and specifically within the McCord Hall it would be the Leaders Academy because I am a part of that. So if you're a student that's in Barrett and you're a WK student, you are automatically enrolled as a Leaders Academy student and you get free printing and you're able to use like the computers there and just sit down in that really quiet environment. It's pretty quiet in there. You can also talk to your friends, um, but it's really nice and I really love that place. The classes range in sizes, but at the beginning, when you're taking your general ed classes, be prepared to be in a class full of around 200 to 300 or more students. And then those would probably be like your sociology or psychology classes. And then once you start getting into your major specific classes, they do tend to be smaller. So 50 to 30 and sometimes even less than that. Yes, you can join clubs on campus. There are plenty of options for you. There is a club for everyone, I love to say, because that is true. If you are not sure of what you want to do, but you have an idea, you can always search through the ASU club sync. I forget what it's called, but I will definitely put those links down below so that you guys can check it out. And just make sure that you're aware that there is something for everyone if you don't want to join a sorority, a frat, or Greek like stuff like that. Like you don't have to. You can join clubs on campus or you can do in a murals. Um, all that great stuff, there's an option for everyone. Yes, I do believe that there is really great support for first generation students transitioning to school as well as just regular students transitioning to um, from high school to college in general. Even if you're a transfer student, they do have those options for you. Um, I would say I recommend going to the First Year Success Center. They have a lot of resources there for you. They help you build your schedule. They help you Basically, with anything you would need help with your first year in college, they're there for everything and anything. Another resource would probably be your mentors. I'm a residential engagement leader, so residential engagement leaders and your Barrett mentors, your, I believe there's even like Tooker mentors live within like your building so make sure that you're taking advantage of those resources because you can make connections early on in your career and use them further down the line. Yes, you do have to pay for parking. We do not have free parking on campus. I actually had to pay $800 for a parking structure that was 
across the freaking street and was not even anywhere close to my business classes. It was probably like a 15 to 20 minute walk every night, every day. Um, so just be aware of that. It ranges from around, I believe, like 200 to 800 dollars a parking like space for the whole year, sometimes even a semester. So just make sure that you're aware of the cost. I'll also have the link for that below, but you do have to pay for parking. So if you're bringing your car, and I really don't recommend that you bring your car unless you need it if you're a commuting student or you're interning or you just don't live on campus. So we're, those would be the only reasons why I would recommend that you bring a car. If not, then just buy a bike or a skateboard and even take like Uber and stuff. It'll be a lot cheaper to save you gas, gas money and more money that you don't need to spend when you're buying your parking pass because you'll probably only use your car five times out of the semester. As for Greek life, I'm actually not a part of it whatsoever. I personally didn't want to join it, but don't worry, I do have some experiences for you here. I'm going to be looking off of my phone and iPad just to refer to these basically statements from my friends. I kind of gathered a consensus of what it's like and the experiences with their experiences because I thought it would be great to just ask a couple of my friends for like their opinions and what their experience was like. So the first person that I have on here would be my friend Maddie. She rushed for both the business frats. It was AKSI and DSP. She said it was kind of hard um, because they both did overlap, so be aware of overlapping that may happen whenever you're rushed. Yeah, let me just show you guys what she said. So, obviously I chose AKSI, and I was fortunate enough to get a bid from them, and now I'm a member. But basically, how rushing went, Monday we had like a meet and greet thing for both of them. Tuesday we had like, um, like a fun like little event it'd be like a sporty event or it would be like community service and then wednesday would be the opposite and then friday would be like a fun like creative day so one time it was a case study one time it was like just like a dinner like everyone does it differently but everyone's a brother to me and super supportive and like i'm really thankful for my big i'm actually getting dinner with her today like she's she became like one of my best friends um and like such a great mentor so i think this is like a really honestly i think professional business fraternities are such a positive experience because you feel like you have a support system and the dues, oh, I forgot to mention, this is important. The dues are way cheaper, like ridiculously cheaper. Like I think total, I only had to pay like a couple hundred bucks. And as a pledge, you play, you usually pay more, but like as an active member, you only have to pay like a couple hundred bucks a semester. Like I think it's like 150, 150, but that covers like t-shirts and food at events. Like it literally, it's like you're prepaying for all of your events and it's not like you're paying thousands of dollars for friends. It's literally like you're paying a small amount. And a lot of that goes to the events you do to raise money for charity, to host fun events for ASU. So I feel like it's like paying for AMA dues, like that goes to the conference and all that stuff. So it's like a reasonable amount. I think $150 is like a fairly reasonable amount for all this stuff I get in return. Like I can't tell you how much merch I have from them that I swear is worth more than like the dues I pay. Now I'm going to just share with you guys more experiences. I have a couple of them here for you guys. So my friend Dom, I asked him to just give me a spiel on how he kind of created his own frat and also being a part of AK Psy. I'm planning on staying in both AK Psy and Phi Delta even though both are big time commitment, both gave them me so much already. AK Psy, I rushed spring of my freshman year. I decided to because I wanted a strong support system to help me academically and professionally because AK Psy is labeled as a professional business organization and I thought it'd be good fit. Going from being a pledge to being a member now has given me not only a, a lot of social confidence, but a lot of professional confidence as well. Phi Delta Theta was a different story Early fall semester of sophomore year, I wanted to do something more along the lines of starting something on campus. And then he asked his big later in the chapter about creating his own fraternity and he got together with the fraternity ambassadors who were doing it and he was basically able to bring that chapter to ASU. And then he recommends this. I would say to anyone looking to start an organization or a club on campus, whether it's a philanthropy 
based or ethnic, academic, or Greek life, go for it. It may not be easy, but it's definitely worth it. My best friend's dilemma is actually in a multicultural um, sorority, so I asked her to also give me her feel on it, so this is what she said. It's fun, it makes you feel like you have a little family away from home, and it's great because so many people that are like in the organization really resonate with you and your personality so that's really cool and they also have similar experiences and are striving towards similar goals. She also said that there are a lot of opportunities for community service and for having fun and going to different events. Then I asked my friend Jessica to also give me her experience. She's actually a part of DSP and O5A. She said DSP is a great mix you get to grow professionally and personally. It definitely gave me a step above and taught me so many helpful tips and it has been a great opportunity to meet other driven business students. It's about professionalism, community service, and social aspects. It's great if you want to meet tons of great people but don't have the time for a full-on sorority. It is also co-ed so you get to meet so many people. I also just joined O5A a national service sorority. I like it because I always wanted more girlfriends but didn't have the time or confidence to join a sorority. We focus on community service, friendship, and leadership. It is fun because we have the fun parts of Panhandleneg like Bid Day and Big Little Week and other events. We do volunteering events, fun socials, and it's cool meeting people from all majors, not just business, and she loves them both so much. Then I asked my sorority and just everything grew Caitlin and she was a doll and she sent me all of her information which is amazing because she is just so knowledgeable about this area and Greek life in general so if you guys do need help please reach out to her she is the best so Caitlin said sorority recruitment ah I knew coming to college I'd be given a sorority a shot. My involvement in high school included sports and student government, so I figured, why not? First, make sure you're following ASU Panhellenic on Instagram. They're your one-stop shop for all things Greek life related. The recruitment registration link is now open and you can check out everything ASU Panhellenic has planned there. Second, trust the process is something you'll hear a lot but if you're truly just let go, have fun, and use this opportunity to make friends at ASU, everything will work out exactly as it should. If at any point in time you are no longer wanting to join a sorority, you do have the option to opt out. Third, let your personality shine through. You want to end up in a sorority who loves you for who you are. Express yourself in your outfits, in conversations, and be genuine. Trust your rogue gammas, aka um, recruitment counselors and they'll be there for you. Then I also asked her about like the type of sorority she was a part of. So she said, yes, I'm in the social sorority, National Panhellenic Sorority. Um, if they're looking for something aside from social, follow ASU underscore Greek life. She also mentions that she is not biased whatsoever and she's trained in this area to hold these conversations now. So don't be shy. Please contact Caitlin, she's it's amazing. If you have any questions whatsoever with Greek life, she is the person to go to. And yeah, that's just basically what I got on all of their ends and I think it was just amazing that I was able to get this information for you guys. But again, I want to mention to not put all your eggs into one basket. If that's one thing I've learned from my friends and seeing my freshman babies go through that, do not put all your eggs into one basket because sometimes when a girls get dropped or guys get dropped from their favorite um, house, they are very sad. But in all reality, the people that are going to choose you are going to love you, just like Caitlin said, are going to love you for who you are. Stuff like that, like just give it a go, have an open mind and always just trust the process. How difficult is it to add on another major, minor, certificate, etc., or even switch your major? I think it just really depends on how much you can handle. If you go and talk to your counselors, they do allow you and help you 
build a graduation plan and you can even ask them there if they think that it will be possible for you to graduate on time with adding on a double major or a minor, whatever you choose to do. However, the thing I will tell you is that if you're trying to add on a double major with a different school, say it's engineering and business, it will be a lot harder. So I recommend that you start earlier so that you don't miss out on those classes and don't get to like do the degree and end up graduating later than your original graduation date unless that is okay with you. Another thing is that if you do double major within your school though, there are lots of opportunities because you already have those basic general ed classes that you have to take and say like for instance I'm a business student, my business core electives are the same as the other majors core electives so I can just double dip in those classes and I don't have to worry about taking extra classes and I basically can just graduate with my double major a lot easier and the business school does that. I know a lot of like the school of molecular sciences does that and other schools, the liberal arts and sciences, the teachers college. So just ask your advisor to see what's best for you. But yes, it is possible and I'm doing it too and I absolutely love my other major. So. Just keep that in mind. Um, for minors and certificates, same thing. You do also have to take those classes, those extra classes, so be aware of that. For minors and certificates, it is a lot more common to be able to actually do those like outside of your own school. So say I'm a WPK student, I'm doing finance, but I really love psychology. I can do my finance major and a minor in psychology or even a minor in biology or even a minor in like computer science. So there are different options for you, you just have to ask and look around. SU does offer a lot of scholarships. Um, I know that you get those merit scholarships when you come in from high school or like college, wherever you're coming from or wherever you're standing as a student. So they do have separate scholarships on the ASU scholarship portal and we also have major specific scholarships so I've won like two of those so far and they're amazing so just make sure you keep an eye out for those. I will also provide the link for the scholarship portal and where you can find those major and college specific scholarships that are available to you. So fees on your accounts usually those are going to be for like group wellness classes, a gym access, you have the opportunity to also um, go to the games with those so you have one free ticket as a student to go to the student section at the games basketball football etc so that's what those are on your account so i really recommend that you go to the free group wellness classes they're amazing they have like hit classes yoga you name it they have those options available for you for free um, you do have the personal training option however you do have to pay for those classes and then Apart from that, there are also intramurals that you can join and there are just so many options for you to choose from. For your broad options, we have a ton of options available. It just really depends on what you're looking for. There are so many programs and you can even do some that are specific within your major, your college and stuff like that. Or you can even do some internships abroad. You can do like a full term abroad. You can do a summer intensive or even like a two week intensive program and so those are the different options they also have a lot more that will be listed down in the description with a link to where you can find that information. I absolutely love my experience living on campus I think everything was a lot closer for me to personally be able to walk to and whenever I would finish class I'll just go back home and sleep and I just really love campus. The environment there is really lively and fun and so I always knew that I was going to be with other students there and I could just go ask my friend if they wanted to hang out because they're literally down the street from me because they were either in Vista del Sol or Barrett or like in Hacienda. So that was fun having my friends on campus and being able to go out having the freedom that I was able to have going to parties and all that great stuff, what's also really fun. Yes, there are plenty of resources on campus for international students. We actually have the International Students and Scholars Center on campus, which is a really great resource for those international students of mine. Hey, 
Um, we actually do have some and I always get asked this question and it's a really great resource. You get to make some really cool friends. They have a ton of resources to just help you succeed as a student. She puts on a ton of free events. We have events like tailgates ranging all the way to concerts on the SDFC lawn. So much fun and even like I mentioned there's like MU in the dark and all those other ones that are put on by PAB. So keep an eye out for that but you can always just search up events going on at ASU and you can go to like the downtown campus or even Tempe. Like you can go around to those different places and still get access to those different programs that they have available at the other campuses so just be aware of that. As for public transportation we do have the Valley Metro so that can be the light rail or a bus that you can take and I believe it's around like two dollars and up so like two to five dollars um, for a day pass and you can get that and just go around basically Phoenix or wherever you need to get to if you need public transportation but yeah those are some options and obviously you have Uber or Lyft available too. We actually do have some school traditions I'm going to read them off of my tablet just because I forget all of them but I know that we do have welcome week events that we always do so year round we do have wearing gold on Fridays and then game day we have the inferno section and then for fall we have the ASU welcome which is the experience that allows you to just like be welcome to ASU they drop balloons and you go to basically like a pep rally like a school that they used to do but bigger and it's so much fun and then they also have Echo from the Buttes where you kind of just paint our A Mountain A white to signify that it's going to be a great year, a new year, and you just paint the A white with other freshmen. And if you're not a freshman, you can also go, but that's what we do. And we also have a homecoming parade. We have the lantern walk. We have the territorial cup and then devils on mill. And then we also have devils in disguise. Professors are really accessible after class. Um, most of the times so you can also ask them if they don't have specific office hours, if they can schedule a meeting with you and some of them are going to be more than happy to help you. If not, then I'm sorry. Talk to President Crow and get that fixed or someone else that will allow you to either like go to the training center if they don't help you or try to figure things out. You can talk to other people within the department to try to figure out how to get there, but usually most of the professors will be open to talking to you, especially if you're taking their class. Sources for first generation students, I know that there's a TRIO program and the SEED program, but I believe TRIO program is just off for a downtown campus. And then also there's the First Year Success Center. I don't know about SEED too much, but I've heard about it. So I will link all those things down below. But the First Year Success Center, they basically, like I said before, they help you with your resources, building your schedule, just answering any questions that you have as a freshman. As for how rigorous the um, honors program is on campus, I don't think it's too rigorous. However, it is challenging in the way that it allows you to become more of a critical thinker, a better writer, and a better communicator. And also for the thesis, it's super flexible because you're able to kind of cater it to whatever you want to research. And it can be a creative thesis or just like a regular research, like heavy, focused project which are both two options that you have as for your thesis and there's more information about that but that's just a small overview. As for if I recommend the honors program I'd say definitely try it out. It's not everyone's cup of tea so if you don't like it definitely drop it. Um, you do have to pay a thousand dollar um, fee every semester to be a part of the honors program. I'm not sure if they're going to increase that or if it will stay the same or reduce. So that as of right now is how much I pay to be a part of the honors college. I do get early access to registration as most of other students do in Barrett. So we do get basically first dibs on our classes um, way before everyone else, um, before the like deadline and stuff. So that's really cool. Another good thing is that we do have like the Barrett Riding Centers and a great dining hall and we have a smaller campus on like top of having like a really big campus so it's just smaller within that community and you get to make really cool friends but I think it just really depends on you personally. 
I think if I were to go back and come back my freshman year, I probably wouldn't have done the honors program just because I feel like now thinking about it, if you're going to go to like grad school and you're going into a really challenging career, then I really recommend that you do do the honors program. It's amazing and it gives you that experience that you need, but also if you just want to be challenged, um, if you think that college classes might not be too challenging for you and you want to try something extra to add on that spice and definitely give the honors program a try but I don't think you need it to be successful in college not a lot of people do bear it some people do it just really depends on who you are personally if you are interested in doing a research project then yes you should do bear it and if you are also interested in just being challenged more within your years then do bear it but if you think you'll be challenged enough then don't do bear it because it will be a little bit more work and you do also have to keep in mind that you do have to fulfill your upper division credits to be able to graduate with honors as well as doing your thesis to be able to graduate with honors advice i would give my freshman self well that is a lot but I think I would probably bring it down to three important things. I'd say that if I could go back and just focus on having my social life and work life balanced. I really struggled my freshman year because I wanted to go do fun things but then I was like no my academics are more important when I think you should just balance this out and as long as you do your academics then you can have fun. So just work hard, play hard, like I said before, it's really important to balance those out because you don't want to stress yourself out so much that the only thing you think about is school and you forget that you have a social life and you don't talk to any of your friends and you can't go hang out and have fun even though you deserve it. So I would say to myself to go out and have some fun and not stay in my room all day doing homework because at the end of the day I got as much homework as I would have gotten done with even going out. The second thing is it's okay to not have everything figured out yet. I'm barely or you are barely a freshman baby so you don't have to have everything figured out yet. Just because other people might have everything figured out yet does not mean that you do. Things will change, your likings will change, you will learn who you are in college and just know that your perspectives, your visions, and everything might change. So don't be afraid of change and be open. Keep an open mind always. And just know that you don't have to have everything figured out yet. It will come into place later. And I know it's kind of scary hearing someone say that, but it will come and your time will come to shine. Just go with the flow and do all your hard work and everything and it will pay off for you, I promise. The last one is going to be to learn from your failures and your mistakes. I always say failure is our first attempt in learning because that is true. So use that, leverage that, and create another form of being able to just motivate yourself with the failures that you have and just learn from those mistakes because the more you do that, the more resilience you're able to build and you're just able to grow professionally and personally because believe it or not, not everyone is perfect. We are human beings, we make mistakes and guess what, celebrities, other people have failed so many times so don't be afraid of failure. It's going to happen to the best of us and sometimes it'll be at the worst times but just know to just chill, take a chill pill, talk to your advisors, use all the resources available on campus to your advantage. If you still have questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I can even do a part two of this if you guys like that. So please just let me know and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys learned some tips or some advice that you probably wouldn't have known um, before going into your freshman year and I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so I know that I'm helping people out and I am basically just trying to get you guys the information that you need to be successful in college because I would have wished I knew this going into college as a first generation student and just in general like things I would have wished I knew that would save me time, money, and stress. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my podcast. And I'll see y'all next time.